might uh, my brother Dave couldn't be here this morning, so I, Dan, decided to take his place. <laughs> I'm the better looking brother. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Connections Church. Uh, back about, I don't know, maybe five years ago, I happened to be at the uh, bookstore that I like to frequent. And, and I came across this book called How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci. And the subtitle is Seven Steps to Genius Every Day. And I looked at it and said, well, it's a national bestseller. Millions of copies. So I turned the book around and began to read. Okay, let's see what this book is about. It says, genius is made, not born. Human beings are gifted with almost unlimited potential for learning and creativity. Now you can uncover your hidden abilities. Sharpen your senses. Liberate your unique intelligence by following the example of the greatest genius of all time, Leonardo da Vinci. At that point, this book was as good as purchased. I checked it out, I brought it home, and, and I devoured this book. I'll be honest with you, it's really a good book. And very thought-provoking. And you know, it's kind of easy for me to see why a book like this would be a national bestseller. Because wouldn't we all like to believe that somewhere deep down inside of us, there is a hidden genius. Wouldn't you like to believe that? I mean, because I haven't tapped into it yet. But inside you is Einstein-like ability. Yeah, we all want to believe that. And if somehow a, a book can guide us into tapping into our, our yet unknown genius, man, if we could do that, we'd be amazing, wouldn't we? We live an amazing life. Now, you know, I actually think that Michael Gell, who wrote this book, is on to something. Seven steps to genius every day. You see, he simply he says this. If, if, if you study these seven basic disciplines that Da Vinci practiced, and you become skilled at doing them in your everyday life, you too will unlock the genius within. Here's why that resonates with me. As I, as I read broadly over different sciences and areas, I find a common denominator. People who are labeled as genius, he's a business genius, he's an organizational genius, she's a financial genius, she's a management genius, he's an educational genius, I mean, he's a political genius. When you really read about these people, here's what you find. It's not that they have this off-the-charts IQ. It's not that they possess some very specific personality type. It's not even that they have some innate skill that very few people have or innate ability that only a select few are given. No, here's the common denominator. Each one of them have mastered a very small set of very important skills. And by applying those skills on a regular basis, they do things that are amazing. And they're recognized as being a genius. And it may very well be that you and I do have genius inside of us, too. Now, of all the areas where we would want to maybe tap into some kind of hidden genius, it probably would, most importantly, be in the area of relationships. You see, relationships really are the keys to quality life. In fact, business leaders are now in the habit of saying that if you want to have success in your organization or you want to have success in your career, the key is relationships. Psychologists are saying, if you want to have a really happy, well-adjusted life, the key is relationships. And they're discovering what the Bible has taught us all along, that the key to a quality life, the key to achieving potential, the key to being well-adjusted and happy is relationships and unlocking relationships' power. So if we can learn how to be a relational genius, the kind of person that just knows how to make relationships work. The ones that are working well, we get the most out of. The ones that are beginning to wither, we can bring back to flourish. 
ones that are even dead, we can bring back to life again. If we could be a relational genius, we would have an awesome life. And as it turns out, being a relational genius is not a matter of having an Einstein-like IQ. It's not a matter of being a certain personality type with a certain inner wiring. And it's not a, ma a matter of having some natural God-given ability that just makes you good at doing it. Turns out there's a very small set of critical skills that if we master and apply in life, we can be relational geniuses. And our relationships in life will flourish. Marriages, children, parents, co-workers, friends, relatives and extended family, people in the neighborhood. Relationships flourish if we're relational genius. So what are those skills? What's that small set of really important things that if we can master, we can be a relational genius? Well, here's the good news. God revealed them to us. That's the good news. We don't have to try to figure them out and, and hope and guess and trial and error. God basically listed for us what those skill sets are. That's just like God. See, God's all about relationship. Did you know that? God's all about relationship. What he desperately wants is for you to join a, enjoy a relationship with him. What he desperately wants is for you to enjoy relationships with each other. And so it only makes sense that a God of relationships would want to help us understand how to engage in relationships in a way that bring life and health and joy. No wonder God would say, I want everybody to be a relational genius, and you all can be. Here's how. And this is what's so cool about the Bible. There's one place in particular where God gives us like this crash course in becoming a relational genius. It's found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 25 through 32. And there, in rapid fire fashion, God says, here they are. If you can master these skills and apply them in your relationships, you, any one of you, could be a relational genius. So what we're going to do is starting today and working down through the next four Sundays, we want to unpack this list in Ephesians 4. And we want to see if we can identify, grasp, and then go out and practice these skill sets that can turn every one of us into a relational genius. And friends, that's the end game here. My goal, my prayer, is that five weeks from now, every one of us would be able to look at each other and say, man, my relationships are better already. I'm unlocking the hidden relational genius inside. Now, the one that we want to tackle today is a very, very important one. And it's very important for this simple reason. Love leaks. <coughs> Did you know that? Love leaks. It, it, it's sort of like this. It's like, um, it's like we all have these love tanks inside, but for whatever reason, the things we do to each other <coughs> pokes little holes in them. And the love that we have for each other just over time tends to leak out. <coughs> And the love kind of goes down. And, and then the next thing you know, it's like love has gone flat. And love makes the ride through life kind of bumpy. And then pretty soon the, the relationship just dies. Maybe you know what this is. Fix a flat. Everybody should have this in their car. See, here's the cool thing about a can of fix a flat. It's made so you can just put it right in, inject it right into your tire. And it not only inflates it with air, it puts this stuff. This shows what I know about it. Stuff. <laughs> this stuff shoots into your tire as well. And it coats the inside of your tire so that it not only reinflates your tire, it fixes the leak. And it's like, voila, problem solved. Holes patched. You know, no more leaking. Off we go. Great ride. I was thinking, wouldn't it be awesome if there was one of these for relationships? Wouldn't that be cool? 